events in number 10. But if you've had enough and you fancy just getting away from it all, well, there could be good news. It would seem that testing requirements will be removed, but you have certain qualifications or levels that you have to address or have to accept it to be permitted to do that. So let's go straight to the man at the heart of this story, Transport Secretary Grant Shapps. You're announcing something coming in as of early February. What exactly is it in detail? Good morning, Secretary of State. Morning, Nick. Uh, From the uh, 11th of February, uh, in time for half term, you will be able to come to this country and uh, if uh, you've been fully vaccinated, in other words, two vaccinations, uh, you will not need to take any tests at all either before you leave to come here uh, or when you get back here, of course, no quarantine. Uh, In other words, kind of back to the good old days. Uh, The only thing you have to do is fill in the passenger locator form. And that is it for fully vaccinated folk. So to depart from an airport, do I have to I, I have to show my NHS on my mobile phone? I have to show I've had my two boosters. Sorry, I'm so sorry. My two jabs and my booster. Then I go and presumably I fill it. I still follow the uh, the tracker form when I come back. Is that correct, Secretary of State? That, 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 that's exactly it. In fact, you don't have to have had your booster ah. currently as far as we are concerned. But increasingly countries elsewhere are requiring the booster for you to go there. So an important message for people listening uh, to your show, particularly perhaps younger people who maybe think, oh, I haven't bothered with the booster. I've, I've been jabbed. I haven't bothered with the booster. Uh, get the booster because this summer, uh, of talking to my counterparts around the world, in Europe and elsewhere, if you want to travel, uh, say, go to Spain on holiday this summer, they are almost certainly going to require that booster jab. So you want to get that. But no, for the time being, fully vaccinated just means um, you know the, the first two doses. Uh, and uh, that is it. And You'll use the NHS app to show your status. One other change I'm making, which I think would be quite helpful, uh, is 12 to 15-year-olds who can be fully vaccinated uh, haven't been able to use the NHS app until now. They're going to be able to do that as well from the 11th of February. So uh, kids will also be able to show their vaccinated status on that NHS app. And from your conversations last year on this with your counterparts in America and across Europe, what, what is a child's age determined as Secretary of State? Are we talking 15 and below or 12, as you just referenced, or does it vary country to country? Yeah, well, actually, be more straightforward than that. A child, as in somebody under 18, uh, is 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 coming this way is is exempted. But to get, a, to, get a, to get a to get a seventeen year old to the south of France or Spain or the US, uh-huh. yeah, what, yeah. going that away, what would you to, say? To go to go to go that way, uh, you're, they'll want the vaccinations and twelve to eighteen. Is, it, it, so so it, twelve is deemed that, to be the yeah. sort of age. That's okay, it. That's it. can we move to other matters? You probably were not able to hear, but we did a report just before you came into our uh, studio about the problems with some of our rail services. Now, we know the government advice is that we need to get back to behind our desks, to our offices, and as we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. But you may be aware that 21 of the 28 rail services in this country Mm -hmm. are still operating reduced or, in some cases, suspended timetables. We just had a report from West London where they've gone down from four early morning trains to one, and you won't be surprised to hear there are crowded platforms. That's not good for commuters. That's also not good, of course, for keeping a degree of distance. Um, Are you going to try and jolly these train companies along. We need more services, Secretary of State. Yes, uh, so it should just be explained that with the Omicron uh, uh, sort of wave, uh, a lot of people were off work. And because of that, rather than um, being cancelling trains and creating uncertainty in the timetable, uh, the train companies that you just referred to uh, went to a reduced service to provide the certainty of that service. Uh, cutting from four trains to one train sounds very uh, extreme, so I'd be pleased to... I didn't hear your report, but I'd be pleased to we'll, follow We'll up reference that to your staff later, but more broadly... Yeah, that'd be very helpful. Yes, but more indeed. more broadly, it's I mean, 21 temporary... of the 28 companies nationally, yeah. Secretary of State... Yeah, because, are... because of course, the... But you, you, you want everyone back. The, the Prime Minister's yeah. guide is that. So there will a lot of people, I'm, we're talking millions, you'll have the numbers, I've no idea, probably millions board our trains every day to get to their offices, their shops, their factories. We need those trains, Secretary of State. That, that's right. I mean, the numbers have been much smaller in terms of people travelling. People are now starting to return. Unfortunately, because uh, we're getting on top of the Omicron uh, wave, of course, and we've done things like uh, cut self-isolation to... Uh, five days where people have got negative tests that is enabling people to come uh, back so i've um, said to these train companies don't keep these reduced services in place a day longer than you need to in order to provide the certainty uh, of service i'm looking for overcrowding very carefully so i'd be very pleased to follow up on your particular uh, report generally across the network uh, that's not what we've been seeing and uh, and as i say the 
the, the services will come back as their staff become uh, available. It is our, our intention to return uh, all of these services. Uh, obviously, coronavirus has stopped a lot of people of from being able to go okay. into work, and that's just a fact. We'll get the report over to one of your colleagues later this yeah, morning, please, and perhaps yeah. your team can look at it. I'm um, just staying on this theme. Are you? Uh, what, what is the percentage of staff in your department that are back behind their respective desks, Secretary of State? I don't have a percent yet, but um, I did notice yesterday, just anecdotally, lots more people around than I've seen uh, since we uh, since we, we we went to Plan B. So, which is encouraging. Actually, typically with the Department for Transport, people tend to quite like travelling. So, I speak to a lot of my team at the Department for Transport who say it's really nice to uh, be able to get out of uh, out out of the house and, yes. and into the office. So, what, what, I mean, broadly speaking, are we at sixty percent? Would you say what? what are we? I, I I I actually Nick, I actually don't know. I haven't caught up with the figures from yesterday uh, following that. Sort of the last figure that you had, when was it and home. what was it? Uh, it was it was very low because we were asking people to physically work from home. Again, I can I can find you the, the, the number. I'm not being evasive. I just don't know okay. the answer to the yesterday's figures yet. But anecdotally, uh, it was nice to see the office starting to buzz again. And I was I was I was pleased to see that. Uh, I should also point out that, of course, um, the Department for Transport has moved offices uh, elsewhere in the country now. We're, we're operating in Birmingham, in Leeds, and uh, many different parts of the country. Hastings and lots of our arm's length bodies oh, right. in, in different places as well, like uh, Swansea, for example, well, good. for the DVLA. Well, that hopes their, helps their local economies with good luck to that. Mm. You and I have talked on a number of occasions about so-called smart motorways. I have my own views. You'll have seen the story yesterday. Construction firms hired to build sections of the smart motorway system to be investigated over allegations of fraud and corruption. I need a comment, if you can, Secretary of State, on that. Yeah, well, any any allegation of fraud or corruption, very, very uh, important that's properly investigated. National Highways uh, are the body that uh, do all of that work and uh, build the motorways, in other words, uh, and uh, are therefore undertaking the investi investigation. I've asked for a report on my desk uh, on the same. Uh, like you, I saw the report yesterday. Uh, and I've already followed up on it. OK. Uh, you probably also saw the report last night concerning the Prime Minister and a birthday party that took place in Number 10, when, of course, restrictions... This is in 2020, when were restrictions in place. Um, how can you possibly defend that? I appreciate you weren't... At, well, I assume you weren't at it, but how can you defend this party? Well, well look, first of all, I think it's important that we get to the, to, to the facts. I, uh, as you and I have discussed many times before, I, I share uh, people's uh, sense of upset whenever... Uh, we hear about um, things which may have transgressed uh, any of the rules, not least because I couldn't see my own dad, who was in hospital for four months, and we didn't think we'd see him again. Uh, fortunately, he actually came out after four months, but we couldn't visit him. So I totally understand uh, the upset. I think um, it, it's important that rather than a sort of drip, drip of media reports, we get the full um, picture, uh, not least because I understand that, you know, these, these, this is a group of people in the Prime Minister's own office who he's working with every day. They had to be in the office through What, he works uh, with his period. interior design? I know he spent a lot of money, but his interior designer is with him every day? Well, again, this is what I mean about getting to the, to, to the well, facts. Why, why was Lulu the, Little there? Well, I, I was going to say, I saw uh, the, the interior well, designer, who I don't who I don't know, had put out a statement saying she wasn't invited to anything. I think she, she had come in for a meeting, was doing work at the time, which was legitimate at the time, uh, to, to do. So I think, you know, uh, let, let's get to the facts. Number 10, Will this so be part of the Sue Gray report? There. Yes, and Sue Gray was already aware uh, of uh, of a birthday cake being given to the PM and the circumstances. Uh, and and, and say, food laid you know, out. I mean, we, we need to say also food was laid out from, I understand, Marks and Spencers. So we well, do have what well, I don't it, know what you call it, but I would call that some kind of a party. You've got food, yeah, again, you've got cake. Uh, again, a number of the different uh, elements of this are, uh, are being categorically uh, denied. So I think we need to make sure that what we're talking about is fact rather than uh, a, a one-sided report. And that's exactly what Sue Gray will... Uh, do and she'll be able to report back on it. But I would say this, you know, uh, the Prime Minister had been in uh, hospital, what, a couple of months before that very near-death experience with with COVID, obviously understood um, how serious it was. Indeed. Um, but there's also the Prime Minister who's, you know, done extraordinary things, got Brexit done, introduced the vaccine programme, uh, the right. 37 million boosters yes. that are enabling us to, you know, release people from all that extra cost of travelling yes. uh, is because of this Prime Minister's right. leadership. So let's take everything uh, but, and, and, and get to the facts. And that's what Sue Gray will do. Last couple of points. Is there a fact that the, the new version of the Highway Code comes in, I understand, this weekend or amendments to the Highway Code, particularly pertaining to 
pedestrians and cyclists on our highways. Is that correct, Secretary of State? The, the, new, the new version's being laid in front of Parliament, that's right. And the purpose is to say, if you are a big, heavy goods vehicle, for I wonder where you were going with that. A little bit offensive, yeah. but do go on. <laughs> Let's say a you're a lorry. This time of the morning, but do go on, Mr. Chef. <laughs> uh, let's say you're a lorry. Uh, okay. you, you should you should give way to you know a van, which should give way to a car, which should give way to a cyclist, which should give way to a pe- to pedestrian. So it's, it's about having a sort of hierarchy yeah. of you know but the danger of different uh, types. I, of vehicles, I hear that, I think but, but cyclists do not have to use cycle lanes, even if they're provided. Talk well, that, your way that out of that a, one. That, that has always been a fact. That's not. That's well, not. That's not. Why have we built the damn thing, version. Secretary of State? But as you say, helpful for them to, to use it, but it's never, it's always been the case. This is not a, a cha- that, I don't think that's a change to the highway code. People have always, if you have a right to use the road, you have a right to use the, the, the road. That doesn't change it. But I think these are just actually common sense um, changes to protect everybody. I mean, from car drivers and what have you. And there's another change that I'm bringing in, which you're, but, you may not be aware of, uh. but it's to make sure that we're able to prosecute cyclists who, uh, for example, cause uh, death by their own dangerous cycling. Right. So uh, this is quite a balanced package as it happens. And, and uh, I, 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 you know, I think it's, wor- it's worth noting uh, that I think the injuries and deaths that take place because of uh, cyclists are also uh, unacceptable. But this hierarchy, I think, will, will, will assist with all And this is, so there's no debate, this becomes the Highway Code on Saturday, does it? Or still goes before Parliament? Yeah, the, the, these things are laid, but the changes to the Highway Code are, are laid before Parliament in what's called, I, I think, uh, secondary legislation. Right. Uh, so it's, but where's uh, the it's, advertising it's campaign telling everyone that you have to stop if you turn left at a junction and give priority to a pedestrian? Well, we're, where, 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 are we telling everybody about that then? The fact that we're talking about it right now, it's and I've good. seen very extensive coverage but in the newspapers, is indeed <laughs> advertising. We don't, we don't normally, you know, the highway code is... is it's quite is a big change. I mean, for instance, two cyclists riding abreast is now the preferred option. I do think we need to let motorists know that. Yeah. No, again, actually, this is these these are not quite as radical as you, well, as you no, make it sound. But, Many of these things have already been in place. There's some clarification in particular over the hierarchy of who should give way to who okay. in, 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 on, on, on the roads. But they're all pretty common sense right. things if you are a big juggernaut and i'm not accusing you of being a juggernaut, <laughs> but if you're a big juggernaut you know right. clearly you right. could cause more damage you should Indeed. give way to the next lighter thing down the down the and down lastly the lastly are you according to a report the new john steed of politics Chaps, you'll have to be of a certain vintage, but that is a theme tune for the TV show The Avengers. John Steed was the star. And I read that Transport Secretary Grant Shapps is leading what some call an Avengers team charged with saving Boris Johnson's bacon and putting his policies front and forward. A comment, if you would. Secretary of State. <laughs> I don't, I've never heard the Avengers uh, 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 description before. Um, look, look I, I, as I started to say when we were talking before, we, you know, we, it's very easy to sort of descend into mm. uh, discussions about you know what was happening twenty months ago. I, we've got a prime minister. Well, what do you call your team? Got, I don't have a team. For but what, start why? With, what I, I understand what, you're advertising for a researcher. What, what is he or she? You presumably have researchers. No, that's that's my parliamentary office. So, so uh, that is to help me do the job for my constituents. So, nothing uh, to do with the Avengers team. No, no, I'm afraid not. No, it's a it's a fascinating it's a fascinating but untrue twist. I just so we, every, every MP hires people I in their parliamentary office. Just saw Sue Gray as Peel. That's all. It's just an attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Every MP hires uh, staff in, the, in their parliamentary office to look after their constituents, okay. which includes needing to research things going on right. in your constituency in order to help local businesses and charities and constituents. Right. And, and I'm afraid the job is is in that. Uh, uh, please come forward and apply. Anybody oh, who's, 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 who's listening. The government's suffered anyone enough. They don't need anyone, me. Anyone who's listening, but I'm afraid you will not be involved in the Avengers. All right. I'm grateful for your time as ever. Grant Shapps appearing here on LBC late to the news, four after eight. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. From Global's newsroom, Labour has repeated calls for the...